The Jewish leaders led Jesus from Caiaphas to the Roman governor's palace. It was early in the morning. So that they could eat the Passover, the Jewish leaders wouldn't enter the palace. Entering the palace would have made them ritually impure. So Pilate went out to them and asked, What charge do you bring against this man? They answered, If he had done nothing wrong, we wouldn't have handed him over to you. Pilate responded, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your laws. The Jewish leaders replied, The law does not allow us to kill anyone. This was so that Jesus' words might be fulfilled when he indicated how he was going to die. Pilate went back into the palace. He summoned Jesus and asked, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own? Or have others spoken to you about me? Pilate responded, I'm not a Jew, am I? Your nation and its chief priest handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus replied, My kingdom does not originate from this world. If it did, my guards would fight so that I wouldn't have been arrested by the Jewish leaders. My kingdom isn't from here. So you're a king, Pilate said. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. I was born and came into the world for this reason, to testify to the truth. Whoever accepts the truth listens to my voice. What is truth? Pilate asked. After Pilate said this, he returned to the Jewish leaders and said, I find no grounds for any charge against him. You have a custom that I release one prisoner for you at Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? They shouted, Not this man. Give us Barabbas. Barabbas was an outlaw. Between Jesus, incarcerated indoors, and the Jewish leaders who remained outdoors, Pilate moves back and forth, back and forth. What we commonly call the trial before Pilate takes place in seven scenes. Our scripture reading today includes three of those scenes. Well, you'll have to come back next week if you want to hear about the other four. Pilate was the Roman prefect of Judea in the time of Jesus. Known for harshness, Pontius Pilate was no friend of the Jewish people. In the second scene of Jesus' appearance before Pilate, Pilate seeks to figure out why Jesus had been brought to him at the climax of their head-to-head. So you are a king, Pilate asked. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. I was born and came into the world for this reason, to testify to the truth. Whoever accepts the truth listens to my voice. What is truth? Pilate asked. What is truth? Well, that's a pretty good question in this time of fake news, of QAnon, of European war, and of ever-deepening American polarization. What is truth? The writer of John already told us what, or rather who, is the truth. From the 14th chapter of John, Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. For John, Jesus is the truth. This means that we are called to follow the teachings of Jesus. It means that in the ways in which Jesus lived, his sense of community, his deep spirituality, and his passion for justice, we find truth. It is in those things 
that we find truth. Like Mark, Matthew, and Luke, John emphasizes that Leviticus 19.18, love of neighbor, is foundational. From John 13, love each other just as I have loved you, so you also must love each other. This is how everyone will know that you are my disciples when you love each other. Well, you might be happier if I just stopped now. Heck, I might be happier if I just stopped now. It's simple. It's clear. It's not terribly specific what I've said so far. It also means we could all go home and have a yummy lunch without facing our own failures or the hard stuff about the Bible and the church. But you know me better than that. Consider. Pilate asks, what is truth? Jesus tells us he is the truth. Yet this passage has been used for hatred. It was used as justification for the Holocaust. To this day, the passion story is used to justify anti-Semitism. Absurd, I know, when you consider that John was a Jew writing to Jews about the life of the Jewish Jesus. Still, that's what happened. If we blamed it on poor scholarship and misreading of the text itself, which is a legitimate blame, we could pat ourselves on the back for being smarter than those people, and we could still go home early. And while sloppy reading, sloppy scholarship is a factor, there are inherent problems in John, John himself. Trouble is, the Gospel writers themselves especially John, cast blame broadly on our Jewish neighbors for the crucifixion of Jesus. It might be more accurate to say that John was anti-Jewish than anti-Semitic, but regardless, the result has been the same. I know, I know, you are skeptical that anything in the Bible could possibly be imperfect, but the Bible is not nor ever was it considered in, by the ancient writers to be words spoken by God. Rather, it is a sacred text written by human beings telling the stories of their spiritual journeys. Do not misunderstand me. The Bible is the elemental tool of our faith. It is a crucial document. It is important for us to know our Bibles and study our Bibles. And if we use it prayerfully, it can help us to grow in our faith and in our relationship with one another, and we can be better people. But like woodworking tools, if used improperly, someone ends up in the emergency room. And that's what's happened with the text. And if we don't at first see the anti-Jewishness of John, it's because it is too familiar to us or because we are not Jewish, writes New Testament scholar Amy Jill Levine. Anti-Jewish and potentially anti-Jewish rhetoric goes unnoticed in so much of Christian scholarship because the authors are not attuned to how their words sound to different ears. So Pilate. Pilate appears in both John and in the Synoptic Gospels, Mark, Matthew, and Luke. A mid-level administrator, he was assigned to Roman-occupied Judea. Known for his strident rule, he was recalled to Rome in the year 37 because his cruelty was so bad that even Rome had problems with it. Pilate was not a nice guy. And yet the Gospels especially John, portray him as this reluctant crucifier. The Jewish leaders, more accurately but more harshly translated simply as the Jews, show up on Pilate's doorstep with Jesus. When asked what crime has been committed by Jesus, they reply, If he had done nothing wrong, we wouldn't have bothered to hand him over to you. Pilate responded, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. And the Jewish leaders replied, The law doesn't allow us to kill anyone. John implies that they are unethical and manipulative. 
the Jewish leaders. The Jewish leaders are willing to bend, that Jewish leaders are willing to bend rules and cavort with the occupying Romans in order to see that Jesus ends up dead. Pilate, a man historically known for his cruelty, is painted sympathetically. This is true in all the Gospels, but especially in John. Written last, John portrays Pilate the most sympathetically of all, writes John Shelby Spong. Pilate is clearly being developed in the Synoptic Gospels as a sympathetic figure, seeking to escape from the task of pronouncing the death sentence. All of his efforts, however, ended in failure. Surely there was a growing tendency in the Christian community to paint Pilate as something other than the villain. I find it incredibly disturbing and problematic that John writes about Jesus, the truth, all while himself missing that truth. While espousing love of neighbor, living as Jesus did, and following his teachings, Jesus blames those he pejoratively calls the Jews for convincing a malleable Pilate to brutally crucify Jesus. Am I suggesting that John is a hypocrite? Am I suggesting that John is a hypocrite? Probably. But maybe, maybe I'd put it this way instead. John is so bitter and angry about his community of followers, his community of Jewish Jesus followers, being kicked out of their local synagogue, that he blames all Jews, not only those in his own time that have actually kicked him out of the synagogue, but those in Jesus' time. Sadly, the Christian church has compounded upon John's anger and bitterness and blamed a whole group of people for the death of Jesus for nearly two millennia since. The truth revealed within the scripture is denied by the writer of John. And our human proclivity toward fear and hatred of the other led to heinous acts. We too simultaneously talk about love of neighbor while hating others. So is there any good news here? Absolutely there is. Let's look at this from another direction. The remarkable thing, the good news, is that despite John's imperfections and despite all the abuse of the Bible by Christians for at least a millennia and a half, the truth of Jesus can and is revealed through this imperfect human document. The Holy Spirit speaks a word of love, justice, and hope all the same. As John's Jesus told his disciples in the 14th chapter, the Holy Spirit, the Advocate, remains with us. She is here to guide and nudge us into lives that reflect all that Jesus dreams for us. My friends, the good news is that we can choose to root ourselves in the Spirit who will guide us down new paths of radical love of neighbor. Amen. Thank you.